Hi, it was Cat. I don't think anybody's ever going to see this, but if you do, it's day 29 after the nuclear war. And I went out yesterday for about five minutes just to look around the area, and I think I spotted some mushrooms. So today's task is to go and get those mushrooms, and then try and prepare myself and prepare them to eat. 24 hours ago I started taking these, and so my thyroid should be okay. Even though I'm 57 and I probably don't need these, why not? Now whether I'm going to eat the mushrooms or not is a debatable matter, but I think the time has come that I'm going to have to accept that I'm going to get dosed with radiation and I need to make sure my food supplies last. It's been really cold, we've had a really nice spring, but it's been cold ever since. With good rationing, I have plenty of clean water, probably about another couple of years of it, if I, the way I'm drinking it. I'm really minimally eating and drinking, and I'm going to prepare a solution. I'm going to treat the mushrooms with, which I think we should reduce, reduce, not get rid of some of the radiation that probably is on the mushrooms from far out from Ottawa and Toronto. So you need some fresh water. This is two liters, and I'm going to use all two liters. You need vinegar, preferably vinegar that's edible. This is what I have left. I don't have much of it. It was a shortage of my supplies. I have a lot of salt, I actually also have vinegar, but they're all out in the supply depot outside. I don't want to touch that until I really, really have to, because it's got a lot of snow on it and it's probably got a lot of radiation on top of it. Salt, any salt, any edible salt. And I'm going to put two tablespoons of this per litre, so it's going to be four of these. Shake it up. So for every one litre, you want one tablespoon of vinegar, two tablespoons of salt. So I've got two litres because so I'm rationing very carefully. Having prepared this, this is actually going to be outside when I go out, and I'm going to treat the mushrooms outside if I find them, and then the discard water can be well away from the property. Because if I do draw out material from the mushrooms, this will then be contaminated. So this is the nearest thing I have to a decon room. It's the only entry of the house that actually has two doors. So I leave my gear, my external gear, in the middle and then come through here and discard the N95. So I'll see you on the other side. I got my boots on, get the rest of my outer door clothes from the box. Put my salt and vinegar and water out, hopefully I can use the mushrooms with that. First thing on top of here is my knife. Keep it in the sheath, keep it out of the sheath for use. First thing goes on for me is my gloves. jacket. Handle gently, try not to touch too much of the outside. It's gonna get contaminated with any radiation on here. Guy cam was telling me we had a fair amount fall in the first week or so. Like I say, I've had no rain, no snow for the last couple of weeks, so it should be okay. If it was at all wet, I would have a much more waterproof, thicker one on these on, and including the trousers. But, you know, Washing and decontamination is going to be a major issue going forward. And I also would have the hood on. This one I don't. It's actually strangely hot today. These are old Rhino ready for smoke. And I'm really worried about cataracts. These really cut the sunlight down. They don't fit tight over the glasses. So generally, I don't wear the glasses. with me though, in case I need to see. Sometimes you might want to risk cataracts to have a good vision or field of what's going on. Last thing for sun is this. 
really want to keep the sun out of my eyes. Okay, ready? Let's go get some mushrooms. That's a lucky find. Some store-bought mushrooms. I'm not actually recommending you go out and start collecting fungi and eating them. It's a good way of dying. You really need to know what you're eating and how to deal with it. And I've seen people over the years get, have, have liver transplants. However, in a full-on nuclear war, living where I live, I have mushroom books. I'm going to have to start taking risks. I would gently dust off any soil or debris on the mushrooms before the treatment, but get them well covered. Put lids back on everything straight away. Seal it up. Leave for four hours in the sun. So you want to get rid of this well away from your building, well away from your shelter. But you don't want to spend too much time outdoors. This is work, this is pretty radioactive. Now repeat, and gently pour it away, bear it in mind the water if it's worked, with the salt and the vinegar have pulled out a lot of material that's radioactive. You have the paper, paper them down and then dispose of the paper outside. That's it, then you take all of this stuff off, decontaminate once you get back in, and then remove the N95 and put it in a sealed metal bin. Don't throw anything out, you might need it later on. But if this works well, these mushrooms will be good. So obviously don't stay outside for the four hours, the first or the second four hours. You have to decontaminate and go back inside. You want to spend as little time near radiation material as possible. And you want to ingest, you want to eat and drink as little radiation material as possible. Which is why this is a good idea for foraged items, foraged foods. It's not necessary if they've been in a tin or a sealed plastic container. You have to decontaminate the outside of that container carefully. The food should be just fine. Oh, passing mutant. Just want to make a few observations from that exercise which I just did using entirely fake mushrooms. They were not wild. I don't have the skill base for that, though I have books. But it's not really enough when you're talking about your liver. I was pretty lightly dressed for the scenario. It was very, very hot anyway, and it's still about minus one centigrade outside, just below the freezing point of water. The sun's intense today. Without an ozone layer or a damaged one from nuclear war, that'll be much worse. The Rhino Ready goggles don't fit properly, they're not good enough. So on my shopping list is when we go to Ottawa, is going to be trying to get some decent snow goggles that actually fit tight that I can wear glasses underneath. Even without the glasses, they fogged up and I wasn't really doing too much. Speaking of which, that made me sweat and I was very hot anyway. This would not be easy. And bearing in mind, you're going to have to do this for about a three to six month period of time. That's a long, long commitment to keep going. It's so like I said, ration your clothing, ration your water, ration everything. Reuse where you have to, accept the fact you're going to get a dose of radiation. Try to make it as low as you can. I hope you never need this information. I'm really sickened by the news. Um, I'm sweating. I'm really sickened by the news. Like the fact that we're back here after the Cold War actually talk about biological, chemical and nuclear warfare with Russia is absolutely a complete and colossal failure of every single politician of every single country in the world right now. Toodles. This was an Irradiated Terrier production 2022.